working for the good of those who love him The Bible says his plans for me are good God is always working for the good of those who love him He helps me do all the things I should When I play, play, play Every single day When I jump, jump, jump all around which were not good for the people. He punished, imprisoned, and threatened people who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. 
He even hurt them. But Saul thought he was doing the right thing and felt that God was pleased with him because he did not believe in Jesus. He had pretty much taken care of all the believers who lived in his area and then he wanted to go to Damascus to stop the believers there. He received letters from the high priest in Damascus in support of his doings. So Saul planned to bring back all the believers of Jesus in Damascus to Jerusalem in chains. Saul was on his way to Damascus with a group of people when he suddenly saw a bright light shining down on him. He fell to the ground in shock. Then a loud voice said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who is speaking to me? Afraid, Saul asked. I am Jesus. The voice said, It is me you are persecuting. Now, I want you to get up and go to the city, and I will tell you what to do next. The men who were traveling with Saul were speechless. They heard the voice but could not see the face of the man who spoke the words. Saul tried to get up, and that is when he realized that he was blind. He could not see anything or anyone. So the men with him led him into the city of Damascus. Saul stayed there for three days without seeing anything. Those three days he did not eat or drink water. There was a believer of Jesus in Damascus called Ananias. One day he had a vision where God asked him to go and talk to Saul. Right at that moment when Ananias had a vision, Saul was praying. God told Saul that a man named Ananias would visit him and he would lay hands on Saul, which would get back his sight. Ananias was not too happy with God's instructions. He said, Lord, I have heard the terrible things that Saul did to your believers in Jerusalem and he came here to do the same. Do you really want me to go see him? It's okay, God said. Go ahead and do as I tell you. I have chosen Saul to take my message to the Gentiles as well as to the people of Israel. Ananias obeyed God and went to see Saul. He put his hands on Saul's eyes and said, Brother, God has sent me to get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something that looked like scales fell off Saul's eyes and he could see everything. Saul was baptized right away. He drank some water and got back his strength. That was an amazing story, Harry. Oh yes, it was. The Holy Tales Let's begin with the story. Once upon a time lived a Roman officer named Cornelius in the town of Caesarea. Cornelius and his entire family were believers in God. He helped the poor by giving charity and he prayed to God quite often. One afternoon, Cornelius had a vision where he saw an angel of God standing in front of him and calling out his name. Cornelius was terrified. He asked, What do you want, sir? The angel replied, God has answered your prayers. Now he wants you to send some men to Joppa and look for a man named Peter. They will find him in the house of a man called Simon who lives near the seashore. Ask Peter to come and visit you. As soon as the angel left, Cornelius called two of his servants and a soldier and sent them to Joppa to find Peter. The next day when Cornelius' men were about to reach Joppa, Peter had a vision too. He had gone to the rooftop to pray. 
Around noon time, he was hungry when he saw the sky open up and a large piece of material was lowered down by the four corners. And inside the fabric, there were all kinds of animals, reptiles and birds. Then he heard a voice. The voice said, Peter, get up and kill those animals and eat them. No, said Peter. I have never eaten anything that is not allowed by our Jewish laws. The voice continued. Peter, if God says something is all right, then do not disagree with him. Peter had the same vision thrice before the piece of material disappeared. Peter was confused. He had no clue to what this vision could mean. Right then, Cornelius' men arrived. They asked to speak to Peter. The Holy Spirit spoke to Peter and told him that some men had a right to ask him to go with them. The Holy Spirit advised him that he should go. The Holy Spirit said, You should go because I have sent them to you. Do not worry. All is well. Cornelius' men told Peter that even though Cornelius was a Roman, he always honored and obeyed God. They also told him about the vision that Cornelius had, and that is why he sent them for Peter. Hearing all of this, Peter agreed to go with the men to visit Cornelius. Cornelius was waiting for Peter to arrive. He called for all his relatives and friends to be there to meet Peter. When Peter entered, Cornelius fell to the ground to worship him. Peter picked him up and said, Get up! I am just a normal man like you. Peter and Cornelius talked for a while. Peter said, You know, it is against Jewish laws for me to come into the home of a Gentile. However, God showed me that I should never think of any person to be unclean. So here I am to see you. Now tell me, why did you send for me? Cornelius told Peter about the vision he had. It was then that Peter realized his own vision was God teaching him not to discriminate among people. God accepts all those who fear and obey him. Peter told all the people present in Cornelius' house that God offers peace through Jesus Christ. He told all about Jesus' life, death and resurrection and even of his appearances after coming back to life. Peter told them that Jesus had given his followers the job of preaching the good news everywhere. The Holy Spirit helped everyone in Cornelius' house understand what Peter was saying, and all of them believed. Some of the Jewish people who had come with Peter were amazed that the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles. Does anyone here object to these new believers being baptized? Peter asked. No one did object, so Peter gave orders for all of them to be baptized. That was a really nice story. I liked it. Great! The Holy Tales Today's story is about Paul getting arrested in Jerusalem. Paul bid goodbye to the believers in Ephesus and headed for Jerusalem. Some of Paul's friends begged him not to go there because Paul had received death threats from the Jewish leaders who were very angry with him. But Paul was ready to give his life for Jesus' sake. His friends were unable to convince him otherwise, so some of his friends went along with him. In Jerusalem, Paul met the leaders of the church and told them all about his experiences preaching in other cities and the number of people who were following Jesus now. The leaders praised God for all the work he had done, but then they said, We know that a lot of Jews now believe in Jesus because of your preaching. However, we take the law of Moses very seriously. The Christians of Jerusalem tell us 
that your preaching is trying to make people turn their backs to Moses' laws. So what should we do now? We have an idea. We have some men who are going to the temple to get their heads shaved and be part of the purification ceremony. Pay for them to have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that the rumors are false and that you encourage people to obey the laws of Moses. Paul agreed to their plan and he went through the purification process the next day. But there were some Jews from Asia who saw him in the temple and immediately started a riot against him. They grabbed him and yelled at him saying, This is the man who teaches people to go against Moses' laws. He even speaks against the temple. Gradually, the entire city joined in the riot against Paul. The people dragged him out of the temple, trying to kill him, but the Roman commander arrested Paul and put him in chains when he heard the news of the riot. He asked the people about Paul and what he had done. People were shouting out different things about him, and the commander was confused. He had no clear idea as to what Paul might have done. The crowd pointed to Paul and continued shouting, Kill him! Kill him! Paul asked the commander if he would get permission to speak to the crowd. The commander let him. The crowd went quiet when they saw Paul come forward to speak. Paul said, I am a Jew and have learned the Jewish laws and customs. I have obeyed them and I am eager to honor God just as you are. There was a time when I persecuted the believers of Jesus. I even went to Damascus to stop them from preaching against Jesus. But Jesus himself spoke to me on that journey. I now know that he is the real Son of God. I was chosen by God to spread his message to the entire world. One day, I had a vision of God in the temple. He told me to leave Jerusalem because the people here would not believe my message. I argued with him, but he still told me to leave Jerusalem. He asked me to go far away and preach to the Gentiles. When the crowd heard Paul say the word Gentile, they went crazy and began shouting, Kill him! Kill him! The commander brought Paul inside and ordered that he be beaten. As the soldiers were beginning to beat him, Paul asked if it was legal to treat a Roman citizen in this way. You are a Roman citizen? The commander asked. Yes, I am. I am a citizen by birth. Paul said. So they untied him and did not beat him. That was a really enjoyable story, Holy. Yes, it was. So what's the question for today? Today's question is, Where did Jesus appear to Paul on his journey? I know. When Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute the believers. Wonderful, Freckles. Well done. Keep watching. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye.